Hey guys, it's May May, and I am so excited to be doing this Lori Whitlock Teapot SVG with you guys today. Now, there's going to be some chat. I'm going to have to explain some things to you, so you're just going to have to bear with me. This intro may get long, but there's some important stuff I want to tell you. Number one is this video that I'm doing today, I'm going to show you how to do this teapot using your brother's scanning cut. Number two is on Saturday, Melody Lane will be doing this video using the Cricut and Design Space. And I'm super excited for you to see the differences in how this works. Now, I will link Melody's video in the description of this one once it has gone live. So there'll be an I card on the screen and also linked below for you guys. So look forward to that if you're catching this on the day it uploads. Now, I got this SVG file from Lori. She sent this to me and to Melody for us to use it for free, and I really appreciate that, Lori. Thank you so much. This is an SVG, and people have asked me before, what is an SVG? Basically, it's a scalable vector graphic, which means nothing. It just means it's the sort of file that your silhouette, that your um, Cricut Design Space, and that your Brother Scanning Cut Canvas can read. It's the kind of file it needs, okay? Now, I loaded this into Brother Scan and Cut Canvas and I was disappointed and I will tell you why. When this SVG loaded in, all of the images loaded to one mat. So anything that was larger than it needed to be grayed out on the mat and I don't know how to fix that yet because I'm still new to that program, but I will learn it for the future. So I thought, well great, I'm not going to be able to do this video, I'm not going to be able to make this teapot. Nope, did not work that way and I'll tell you why. Lori's file comes with three different images. You get this JPEG image, so you have a reference to look at when you're putting it together. You get the SVG, and you also get the PDF file. Now, you've seen me do this before with PDFs. I can scan these into the compute to the Brother Scanning Cut and cut them still. So that's what I did. I printed this PDF out on my regular printer. Okay, it's already sized to what I need it to be, just like this. I took this to the scan and cut, I scanned it in and cut it. So even though I couldn't use the SVG in Brother Scan and Cut Canvas, I can still get this teapot just by scanning this in. Now let's say you don't have a Cricut, you don't have a Silhouette, you don't have a Brother Scan and Cut, you're not out of the loop on this one. When you purchase this file, which I'll have a link to her store below by the way, you get this PDF. So here's what you do. You print this PDF onto your patterned paper or to your cardstock. You cut it out by hand and you too can make this teapot without any fancy machinery. Okay, so I'm gonna use the scan and cut. I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let's head to the machine. So as you can see, I have printed the PDF. So this comes with the file when you purchase it. So we're just gonna use this to make this happen. It's already printed to size and everything. All you need to do is scan it into your scan and cut. So I'm gonna put this on my mat and I've told you before, I like to just leave my mat loaded in the machine whenever I start a project because then I can just feed them through. I'll show you how that works. All right, we're gonna to go to scan. Now I want to use this multiple times. I don't wanna just do this for today. So I'm not gonna do direct cut. Direct cut means I'm gonna scan it and cut it right away and use it and not save it necessarily. I'm going to do scan to cut data, so I'm going to tap this one. And this is a black and white image, so I'm going to leave it on black and white. If it were a colored image, I would come here and choose color, but we're not. We're going to just leave it on black and white. I'm going to tell it to start. Now it's going to scan this PDF in, and since we're not cutting, I'm not too worried about how stuck down this is. It's just reading it, so I love leaving my mat in there and just throwing the page on the mat. So now I'm going to get my little stylus down here. If you notice, it will recognize what it just did. So it's recognizing the image. It takes a minute or two, depending on the image. So now it has recognized the mat. And you can see a picture of the mat right here. Now, it looks a little muddy right now, and you can't really see what's going on, but I want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to tap this bubble or this capture button up here. And when we do that, it'll process one more time. And now it has outlined the outer um, images that it can see and that's what we're looking for okay so I'm going to tell it to save now I'm going to save this right to my machine but you could save this to a USB or you could save it from or to your laptop but I'm going to save it to the machine so I've got it in there anytime I want it now notice it'll be saved as file number 20 
Um, you might want to write it on your PDF what file number this is and then save this for future reference, which I'm going to do anyway. So I'm going to click OK. And now that is saved into the memory. Now I can just click the home button and tell it OK to delete because it's really not. I've already saved it, so I'm just going to click OK and we're ready to do the next one. So I take this page off of my mat. I bring the next PDF page over, not unloading anything, just sticking that guy down. OK, go to scan. Scan to data, leave it black and white, tell it to start. So now it has recognized it again. I can see the image. I'm going to grab this little top button, the loopy button to grab everything. Now I can see everything is darkened in and I can say save. Now I'm not going to save it here because I've already fed this whole PDF into here and saved it yesterday because I did a practice cut. But you would just save each one of these pages. So you'd save this one. And then there's one more page from this PDF file that you would then load in and save it. Now the cool thing is it's in the memory. So all I have to do now is put my paper here and tell it to cut. So let's do that part. Before we get started, I want to show you this. I like to go ahead and set my blade depth for whatever paper I'm going to use early so I don't forget once I start cutting. To set the blade depth, you're just going to pull this little blade housing out and turn the wheel to whatever number you'd like. Now I'm using a paper that has some glitter and some full accents on it, so I'm moving it to six. I typically leave it on about a five, but just to be safe and go through that full and the glitter, I moved it to six. Now I'm gonna use papers from my Downton Abbey collection, which I picked up from Blitzy. This is made by Crafters Companion, and I've been saving this paper for just such a project. So I'm excited to get to use it today. And we're going to, what I've decided to do is to use a more solid print for the teapot itself and then a print for the kind of accessory or the accent pieces that go on and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's dig into the files. We're gonna start by loading this paper. See, I've left my mat in here. I have not pulled the mat out one time. We're leaving it in, okay? Now, I want you to imagine we just turned the machine on. We just put some paper in and this is what you'll do. You'll click on pattern. You're gonna go to saved data because you've already saved this PDF. Now I'm going to click on the machine because that's where I saved it to. Now I saved this yesterday, so I'm not going to use that number 20 that we did. I'm actually going to use the files number 17 and 18. That's the two I did earlier. So I'm going to click 17. Now this is the teapot body. This is the handle. Um, that's, well, actually, that's the spout. That's the handle, and that's one of the base right there. So I'm going to say OK because I do want it in this paper. Now notice how this image is like all in the middle here of the mat. I don't want it to do that. I want it to kind of hug up and save paper. So I'm going to click this button here and I'm going to tell it to do this. <laughs> when I do that, notice how it moved everything up to the top and we're saving paper that way. That's exactly what I want to do. Now I can tell it OK and it will cut. Cut. Start. <laughs> It's finished cutting, so I'm going to say OK. I'm going to peel this off the mat just like this, and you see it reveals the pieces that it cuts, and I have this much left of this page because we did that paper saver issue. So I'm going to peel this little image away. I'm still not unloading my mat. This is kind of how I do this. <laughs> At the same time, I just leave it loaded. What's the point, right? All right, so there's that. Here is this one, and here is this one. So now we can take our second piece and I'm going to go ahead and use a whole piece just like I did. And again, I'm going to do the paper saver thing. So I'll have about half of these left when we get done. And notice how I rub this down at the top. I also, as it's moving, as it loads in, I'll rub it down some more. But you can just take your finger under the mat, your hands under the mat, and do this to get it onto your cutting surface. Okay, so now we're going to say back home, delete the patterns. Let's go back to the pattern. I mean, yeah, to patterns. Save data to our machine. And this time... I want number 18. So we just did 17. Now I'm going to choose 18. You see it on our um, mat there, but again, it's not where we want it. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do this little close together triangle one, and I'm going to tell it to put everything together. So now we're only going to cut on one side of the page instead of right in the middle. So I'll say OK, OK again, and cut. <laughs> So we're through cutting again. I'll peel this page off of the mat. Still not taking the mat out of the machine, just being lazy or efficient, whichever way you want to put it. 
peel these guys off and now we can cut the accent pieces. So in the same motion, leaving my mat loaded, I'm going to load up my next paper. Okay, tell it okay to the finish cut, go home. Tell it okay to delete, because we're really not deleting, we're just not saving what we just did. Click pattern, save data, and now I know I wanna do number 19, because I've done 17 and 18. Now we need to do 19. So you just scroll till you see 19, it's right here. Choose it, say okay. Again, I don't wanna cut in the middle of the page, I wanna save paper, so I'm gonna click on this button, this one again, and move everything up to the top so I can save half of the page. Tell it okay. Okay again, tell it to cut and go. It's through cutting. I will remove this piece of paper. At this point, I'm through with the machine for the cuts, so I could unload this mat, which is no big deal. Just press unload, and now I can move this to my work surface or just go ahead and pull these off. I will pull these off and take them to the work surface. Now, these are all of the pieces that I just cut and that I need to put this teapot together. I want to show you a couple of things first. Some of the easiest stuff to do is like to glue this spout down and get the handles ready. I want to show you using the PDF how you know where to score and fold. This is the spout and you can see these dashed lines. Now I want to say this to you, if you're doing this on your Cricut or your Silhouette machine, it will either score these or it can actually cut these little dash lines for you so you know exactly where to fold. So you can save that step by using that SVG. Since I had to do this in the upload manner, in the scan and cut manner, I'm going to use this as reference. Well, I see here the first fold is just in the middle, so that's super easy. I'm just going to fold this guy in the center just like that. And now our spout is coming together. Now I also see that these tabs need to be folded. Now you can see where that is because you have a point and a point of reference. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to line it up from one point to the other point and I'm going to take my embossing stylus and I'm going to score this just like this several times to get a nice crisp score. I'm also going to do that on the other side. I can see the points, like I said, I'm just going to line this up on the points and then score. Now I know exactly where to fold those tabs out so that I can mount this to the teapot when I get to that point. So you see how those tabs are? Perfect. We just need to glue this guy together. Run some glue inside of the spout and close it down. And our spout will be ready when we are. Cute, huh? Looks also like an elephant nose, by the way. If you were making a card and you wanted to do that, you could so turn this into an elephant nose and you now have it saved in your scan and cut. Now let's look at the handles. The handles do the same kind of thing. Here's our teacup handles. I'm gonna go over here to my PDF for reference. See where I have these little marks that need to be scored? I can see the little points. I know it's hard for you to see on screen, but when you do this at home, you'll see where these little points are, okay? And you're just gonna score them let your ruler hold them in place. Score them so you'll know where to fold them when it's time to mount them to the teapot. Just like that. Now I can glue these two together because these handles actually get glued together like this for sturdiness. So I'm just gonna run some glue onto one of them. Not on the score marks because I need to fold those. So I'm staying clear of my score marks. Mount these guys together and that glue will help this handle become very sturdy. Now then, I can fold those pieces out where I scored, and this will be ready to mount to our teapot when we get to that point as well. So now we're gonna work on the teapot lid. This is the lid, and these are the score marks I wanna follow. I'm gonna use a ruler that is long enough. My little ruler's not quite long enough, so I'm gonna use a bigger ruler, and I'm gonna line it up right where all of those little points meet. So you can see here where this line runs all the way down here, that's where I'm lining this one up. That's the first score mark I'm going to make. So I'm going to line that up. This is the perfect ruler, by the way, that has the grip in the middle so you can put it onto your a project and then press in the middle to hold it in place while you score. So by doing that, I just made that entire score line all the way down. Now the next ones I want to make are the little score lines here. I'm going to switch back to my small ruler because it's easier for me. Move this guy over and I can see right where to make them 
because of where they line up here. So I can just score it right using my ruler and my bone folder. Perfect. Now I only have one more spot to score on this one, and that is these lines here, which I can see right here on my PDF. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use my cut mat to help me get these nice and straight. So I'm gonna line this up on the edge of one of the lines of my cutting mat. Then I will just use that to keep my ruler guided straight and score. This process is more work than if you have this as an SVG. You can just not have to do this. It'll be done for you in your design space or done for you in your Silhouette software, which I don't know the name of, I apologize. Um, but it will be done for you in those because I wasn't able to use the SVG as I traditionally would um, with the Brother Scan and Cut until I learned how to do that. But I still wanna make this teapot. And so where there's a wheel, there's a way. <laughs> it also helped me to discover that you don't even have to have a machine um, you can do this without a machine at all. You can just cut it by hand. This piece is scored everywhere it needs to be scored, and I can move on to the next one. Now we're going to do much the same thing with this piece. We're going to look at our reference on the PDF, and we're going to score it in those places here. So I like to do all of the ones I can do at one time at the same time. So all of these lines, I can do all at one time just by lining my ruler up to them, just like so, holding it in place, and then scoring all of those lines all at one time. So that's the first row of lines. Now I can go to this next row, line this up right where it needs to be, just from one edge to the other, press that into place and score. Okay, then I'm going to move to the next one, which is this one. These go much faster. This is easier to score than you anticipated being. Now I'm going to turn it this way and do my lines that go across, starting with this first one, just like so, and then moving down. And here you're just lining up one little notch to the next little notch. Use that PDF for your reference. So that's those going across. Now I just need to do these tab sections. So I'm just going to lay my ruler down, line these up, and score them the same. And lastly, these little pieces here, which I'm going to score them both at one time, and that's how we get it done. I'm going to score this top section here and this bottom section here and move down to the next ones. So just use that PDF as your reference. Go through and score all the pieces based on what the PDF says, and you're in business. I'm scoring my second piece now, and I was just thinking, this probably seems like an awful lot of work for everybody, but here's the cool thing. I've realized that no one is left out of this project. Whether you have a fancy cutting or scoring machine, I mean a fancy cutting machine or not, no one's left out of it because everyone can do this by just using scissors to cut the piece and scoring it by hand. So that's a pretty cool thing. I like that. Now I have all of my pieces scored, so it's time to start doing the folding. So I'm just going to fold on my score lines that I created for myself. And this is where you want to take your time on this project. The scoring and the folding is really what's gonna make this one successful or not successful. So you wanna spend some time on this. Don't go too fast. These score lines are what make your pot look, your teapot look very crisp and clean. Now for the lid, I have all the pieces scored and ready to go. The first thing I wanna do is attach the circle together using this little tab on the end. And I wanna go ahead and glue that and line it up together. So I'm just gonna add some glue to this tab here to start. And I'm going to line this up and square it up as good as I can get it. This project, if I were rating the difficulty of this project, I would say this one is a moderate uh, project. It's not easy. This is one that if you've never put an SVG together or you've never put a 3D paper piece together before, you might want to practice on something before you do this one because this one is not the easiest one. However, it is simple to do. It just takes some hand dexterity. So it is fun once you finish. Now I'm going to take that first tab and we're going to glue it to one of these little points here. Just lining it up as good as you can get it. You really want your papers to line up as well as you can do it. 
I'm using art glitter glue for this because I have the fine tip and it also dries super fast. So I think that's definitely the way to go. You really don't have enough room in these little tabs to put a dry sticky tape adhesive. And I think you would really be sad if you were trying to peel off all of that little adhesive backer for all of these pieces. So I'm just using the sticky tape. I mean, the, the sticky tape. I'm just using the art glitter glue to get this one done. It dries so fast that it makes it pretty easy to do. So this is the lid all glued together. You can see on the inside how nice and clean and neat that is. Now this is the second one that I have made. The first one I made on Periscope yesterday for everybody to see. This is much cleaner and neater. I did not score the first one. I just thought, oh, I'll just fold it and not worry about score lines. The score lines make all the difference. So there's the lid. I'm going to set that aside while we work on the body of the teapot which are these two pieces and they actually get glued together. But first I'm going to go through and do these score lines just like I did on that first one. I think it matters. Spend some time on your score lines. Now I want you to see this. I have scored all of these scored pieces, but I wanted to make this clear for you. The top ones here don't get scored inward. They get scored outward and that'll make sense as we go to put it all together. But all the other ones get scored in just this top row gets scored out. All right, let's start putting it together. So these pieces will line up just like this, and you wanna make sure you get your score lines in the same spot. Now they're the same as far as height, top to bottom, so that doesn't matter as much. You just wanna make sure these score lines match up. So I'm just gonna lay that beside it. I'm gonna run some glue on that tab. And then I'm just gonna seal these together. So we are ready to start folding this. I'm gonna start by bringing this side over and connecting it just like this. So again, lining up my score lines and making sure I stay nice and square. So now I'm gonna add some glue. Line those score lines up. Press that into place. And look, all our score lines are now going to be ready to assemble, so that makes this a lot easier if you spend the time on those score lines. All right, so let's just start here. Here's what happens. Your tabs go underneath the one in front of it, and what you do is you line your edges up, and if you make sure all of your edges are lined up when you're sealing it down, your finished project will look great. So I'm going to start by adding glue to the tabs. And then I will line them up, making sure all of my edges line up together. And it will create the shape as you go. It will take a little bit for the shape to start to show. But if you just make sure you get everything lined up correctly, you'll have a teapot when it's over with. This is the last one to put together on this side. And you see, I'm just lining. I'm really paying attention to this top rim and then just sticking my hand in there and attaching that other tab, but I really wanted this top rim to be flat and lined up well. So you see that? Some of them overlap. Can you see how some of these overlap? I don't think that's gonna be a problem. What I want to make sure is that this is really lined up nice and neatly. See that? So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. So I don't want you to think, oh, this is so hard and so intimidating. It's just time consuming. And when I say time consuming, I've been working for about an hour from the start to finish of this project, from cut to this point. I've been working about an hour. Last one on this side. The last one's always the exciting one because <laughs> you start to see the shape come together and it's really cool. So this is the teapot body. Look at that. Now I'm going to tell you, if you saw me do the test on Periscope yesterday, this is much better. The pre-scoring really makes a difference. Let's do a test of our lid. So our lid fits on top just like this. And you can pick which side you want to be the top. They're pretty much the same. Let's see if this other one fits it better. So now for the lid. Now it is not made to do this, but I made mine too tight, I think. Mine will sink right inside of the teapot. So it just kind of holds inside of there. 
and it doesn't go anywhere. It stays in there nice and snug, but it does not go over the lid, but I'm okay with that. It works the same. A lot of teapot lids kind of sink inside the little lip around the top. Then if I want to put ribbon around there, it'll still work. So you might want to be mindful of that and maybe make this the um, body of the teapot first and then kind of use it to help you get the shape or the width of your topper. But this works for me. I'm okay with it sinking in. It's kind of cute actually. I kind of like it doing that. Looks like I meant for it to happen. So that's cool. All right, now we need to make the base to go here. And that is this piece. So I've already scored it and we need to do the folding. So this is the base and I have scored and folded everything, all the little tabs and things. And now you're just gonna run around and add some adhesive to those little tiny tabs and bring that straight up and just create this base, much like we did the topper, like we did the um, top of the teapot. Let me hold that in place for a second. So when you finish with the base, it looks like this. It's all lifted up and it is ready to attach to the bottom. And you can glue it in place. That's probably what I will do because I'm thinking I'm going to put some goodies in this um, teapot. So I'm probably going to glue that down, but it'll sit just like that. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me see. I want to make sure which one is the top and the bottom. Does this fit into the top just right? Okay, that will work perfectly there. So that'll be the top, good deal. All right, so I'm gonna glue this to the bottom. And I'm just gonna run some glue around my teapot. And then just let that sit there and adhere. Put that into the base, Pick that up. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I just put the glue around the bottom of the teapot and then I'm just gonna let that sit and let that glue adhere down. And if I need to, I can go back and take the fine tip of my art glitter glue and run it down in that little crease if I need to, but that will hold it into place pretty good. So we'll set that aside and let that dry. While the base is drying, I'm gonna let it sit like this and I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the accent pieces on because I really just have to spin it to put these on. These are the little pieces that also cut with the file and they just go in these little sections. They don't go that way, that was upside down. They just nestle in these little spots just like that. So I'm just gonna put some glue on like so and then just kinda nestle that into that spot and I'll show you how that works real quick because I can lift it up while I'm holding the bottom. See how they just kinda nestle into each little nook and cranny? So I'll do that. So let's do the next one so you can see me do that too. So a little glue. I think, and I said this on a Periscope, I think this pot, this teapot, has a very Asian feel. So if you had some Asian themed paper that you were looking to use somewhere, this would be a really cute place to do it. It reminds me of when you go to an Asian restaurant and you get like the hot tea, those kind of little pots that they bring out, that's what it reminds me of. So you can see the top ones are all put on. Now I need to put these and these on. Let's go this way since that bottom is still kind of adhering. I'll start with the bottom ones here so you can see me do this. And they go that way. I don't know why I want to put these the opposite way, but they're kind of like a little puzzle. You can't really mess it up. Just nestle them into the spot there that is made for them. And to me, I did the first time I did this, and I'll show you my first attempt, which is kind of hilarious. The first time I made the teapot, I did the teapot in a very patterned paper, and I also did a very patterned piece for this that I'm putting on now. And I think it's better if you let your teapot be a little more solid color. Like I know this has a pattern, but it's really mostly a kind of a craft color, and I think it works better. And then you put these pretty patterned pieces onto the pot. If you look at the picture from Lori's example, her pot is done in pink, her teapot's in pink, and then her um, pattern comes from these pieces that we're putting on now. Now, we'll just do the side pieces, and it goes the same way, just into these little spots here. And also, I put the glue onto the piece itself and then put the piece down. The reason for that is I'm afraid I wouldn't get the glue in the right place because this has a little bit of a border that shows around the square. So I don't want my glue to kind of go everywhere. So I just put it behind the piece and then put that on. Before we go too far, I almost forgot something. We need to put the handles and the spout on. Now I have three of these in place already. No big deal because here's what we're going to do. To put your handle and spout, you want to pick two little points that are opposite of each other on your teapot. So I'm gonna start with this one here, okay? Which is gonna lay a little crooked, but it's gonna be this point. And I'm gonna put my spout there. Here's what you'll do. You see how the spout has these little legs, basically, to attach it. You're gonna just put it right over that 
um, bend in the pot so it goes like this. That way, your paper that you put on top of it will hide the workings. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to add my glue to the inside here on both sides because this is going to get snugged on to this little piece. Just going to kind of center that there. I'm going to hold it for a little bit and let that get um, good and adhered. So now you can see the teapot spout is on and it goes on that little curve that way like I said it hides if you tried to put it right here you'd have the two pieces and you wouldn't be able to get the paper there now that I've got that there I can go back and put the paper on either side and it kind of hides the workings of holding the spout on now this works the same for the teapot handle that goes on the other side you install it exactly the same way just on the opposite side Look how beautiful that looks. Is that not stunning? And the inside is papered as well because we use double-sided paper. And look how the little handles go on seamlessly because they go underneath. Isn't that gorgeous? And it feels very sturdy, much more than my first one, which I will show you toward the end of the video. But I want to do this real quick. For the top of your teapot in Lori's video, she used this bead, and that's really, really pretty. I'm going to see what I've got that I can put on there to be the top of our teapot, and then we will attach it. So I have this bead that was in my stash and I have a brad that I'm going to sink into that hole to hide that open hole. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Got the little bead there and I'm going to put glue onto the legs of the brad. You could hot glue this, but this is kind of close, tiny work. So I'm just going to use the wet glue. Then just sink that in and let that glue kind of take over. I'll wipe off the excess. I have glue all over my fingers at this point. <laughs> I'm going to let that sit for a second and dry up a little bit. Now then, to the top of the lid, I'm going to add glue to the top of the lid. You probably really could hot glue at this point. Just put some hot glue around this little edge. But I'm just going to wet glue that bead on because I'm just going to let it sit and dry. It also, putting this glue around the edge will help the top to be even more sturdy. So now I'm just going to sit my bead there on that glue and let it catch. Sink it a little bit. Go back and run a little bit more around it. So this is the one we did today. Let me show you the one I started with. Big difference. So this is the one I did yesterday. And look how messy with all the different papers and things like that. This is the very first one I did. I will tell you that my lid fit a little bit better, but you can see how it was kind of buckled the way I did it because I didn't get it glued on very good. But I was able to get the lid to go over the top that way. But this one did not do as well as I had hoped. But you can see the difference using the two pattern papers and the bases. Also, these guys didn't fit as good because I didn't do the scoring beforehand. So you guys are going to want to make sure you do it more like this where you do all the scoring. That glue is still drying on top, no big deal. Um, but you'll get these pieces to land in there better if you do the pre-scoring ahead of time. So there's the teapot. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to take the lid out and let it sit and dry so I can show you it to the side because it's adorable. I love it. Can you imagine this filled with tea, different flavored teas, and give this to your mom for Mother's Day? Super cute, right? Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you're able to make this yourself, and if you do, share it with us over on my Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. And also, guys, if you're on Facebook, head over and like May May Made It. We could use those thumbs up here on YouTube and over on our like page. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.